All right, it is Sunday, July 12th, and I am starting the job I've been putting off for quite a while, but my state inspection's coming up, and it's not going to get a past inspection if I've got an exhaust leak. So, for the longest time, I've been hearing an exhaust leak, and I've been putting this job off. Somebody thinks that it's just the manifold seal, but I'm thinking it might actually be the exhaust manifold. I won't know till I get this whole thing ripped out and take a look at it. But since I'm going to do that job and the air cleaner has to come out, I'm sick and tired of the cold air intake. The dust just kills this thing and I'm tired of cleaning it. So I'm going to put an OEM intake back on this thing. Guy that I met through Facebook, Steve Courtney, found one at a junkyard, the whole assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and finally install that. I picked that up from him a few months ago. And then if I can replace my brake booster with all that out of the way, Without having to disconnect any of the lines, I'm going to go ahead and replace the booster. I've got another one that I had for my other Jeep, but I didn't end up needing it. And since this one is, well, I don't know how old it is, I might as well try to do that while I've got all this cleared out. So I'm giving myself all week to do this job just because it is hotter than Satan's sauna out here. I actually have this nice fan <laughs> that's going to be blowing on me. I have an extra umbrella that we have for our table over here, so I went ahead and built a stand for that so that we'd have movable shade, mostly for me working on the Jeep while I'm out in the sun. So I'm only going to attempt to do part of this job today. I'm going to, if anything goes wrong, I'm just going to stop and wait. I don't want to break any bolts or anything like that. So patience is going to be key for me since nothing ever seems to go right. If anybody is going to do this job, there's a guy out there called Out Jeeping that does a great detailed review on how to replace your exhaust manifold. So here is the air intake that I'm going to put back in the box. So I'm looking forward to putting that in. I've been putting that off for a while too. And since I am a YouTube mechanic, there is the guy I was talking about, Out Jeeping. So I have that pulled up. So if I need to refer to anything and look for step-by-step, -step, then I will just watch him. So pretty much have a good idea of how this needs to be done, but it's always great to watch the video for reference. All right. So it is all out. Well, I haven't done the brake booster yet, but everything is out as you can see. And I don't think that the people that did this two years ago actually cleaned off the surface area because you can see that there was a leak there, leak there, and even a leak over here. And when I look on the seal, I only see some debris from this one here. So I don't think they cleaned this off. I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a Scotch-Brite pad and just clean the surface area really good. Plug up or clean out the, some of this debris here without trying to get any of the debris inside plug those holes because I am going to need a new exhaust manifold and I'll show you that in a second. But getting it out, I didn't break off any bolts luckily. I did have to get in some funky yoga poses for the bolts that were underneath the intake manifold. So that's going to be interesting getting those back on. This is probably the most in-depth engine work that I've done so far and hopefully it goes back together well, without a hitch, but it's definitely going to take a lot longer. All right, so on my workbench here, or one of them, I have my exhaust manifold and intake. I ended up taking off the fuel rail, so I'm going to have to end up making sure that all the seals are good on all my fuel injectors. I just replaced those about a year and a half ago, maybe two years, so they haven't given me any issues. I'm going to try to just reuse them all. The seals all look good from what I can tell, but that's going to take me a little bit more time because I did remove that to get it one bolt all the way in the back. It just made it a lot easier. So anyway, this is probably my culprit. As you can see, even though I only got this two years ago, I don't remember what brand it was. It was not a cheap one. I even got one with flex piping to reduce the chance of breaking. But as you can see, the welds are already shot on this thing. I know I've done a lot with my Jeep, but I didn't do any like rock crawling, anything really articulating, but I did, I mean, going Dempster Highway, that's a thousand miles of horrible, in some conditions, horrible road where you just vibrate for a thousand miles. That doesn't help as well as driving on a lot of other dirt roads. So even though I didn't articulate the Jeep really, really bad a lot over the last couple of years, it was enough to 
break this loose and I do have brown dog motor mounts so I did replace those so that's probably not my issue but so to check this something I thought of and I didn't see this anywhere else and maybe it is a general idea but I turned off the lights in my shop I took this flashlight and shown it in here and I could clearly see light coming out of this area, this area. I could even see some light coming out of, I think, down here in one of these welds. But there were three or four places that I saw light with my flashlight when the lights were out. So that tells me that's definitely where my leak is coming from. It probably wasn't my seal. But all that's going to get replaced. Hopefully that'll solve my problem and I can get my Jeep inspected. All right, so I went ahead and took out the brake booster. Getting those nuts out behind that firewall is a nightmare. Getting them back together is going to be a lot of fun. But I didn't have to disconnect any of the lines. It was not easy to do, and I probably wouldn't have been able to accomplish that if I didn't have all this space to play around with to get that brake booster out then. So I haven't kinked any of the lines. This thing was completely dry when I started, so if I have any leaks afterwards, then I'll know that I did something wrong. Day two of the exhaust manifold adventure and because I'm going to get questions as to what I went with I wanted to give you that answer as well as my reasoning. So last night I spent a lot of time reading reviews, looking at different sites, going on forums, looking at social media platforms, trying to find something that if I spent three or four hundred dollars on I knew I could count on it for at least three to four years. And to be honest I couldn't find anything that was consistent. The only thing that was out there that had a lot of reviews, obviously, are the things that you can buy from Advanced Auto or AutoZone and even Rock Auto, but nothing really grabbed my attention to say, if you make this investment, you can count on not having to worry about it. For that reason, I ended up going with a Dorman, and I bought this from Advanced Auto for $140 after the coupon that I had. and. If I'm going to have to replace this in two years, I'd rather replace a $140 unit than a three dollars or $400 unit. I know everybody has their opinions on what I should do or shouldn't do and what has worked for them, but with all the reviews that I read, people say that they spent three dollars $400 and it didn't last them any longer than a $150 unit. So for that reason, I ended up going with the Dorman. Plus, I could also pick this up today, which is just day two, and not have to worry about it being delivered in the mail. I am trying to get this done by the end of the week, which would be nice. So on this Dorman, I've already checked it out with the straight edge, and everything looks great. It did actually on this one as well. The welds on this one look way better than this one does. The only thing I'm not real happy about is that you'd have to flatten out the pipe here, not as much as some others that I saw online, but it is flattened out a little bit. Working with automotive engineers for decades, I do know that it could be sometimes positive, that back pressure, and other times it's going to be negative. But that isn't really too much of a concern. I did go with the baffling again, and most of the negative reviews that were on this product were about the flange not fitting up properly. It does just miss, so I'm going to grind that out just a little bit to get that hammered on there, and it should be fine. But everything else checks out on this. If I have to replace it in a couple of years, so be it. It's not a great job to do, but after I do it the first time, I shouldn't have an issue doing it a second time. I'm pretty sure that uh, any kind of vibration is going to cause welds to fail eventually. If I could get another two years out of this one paying what I did and being able to do this job on my own, then so be it. But that's what I went with and that's why I know everybody has their opinion. People are going to say you should have went with this or went with that. Well, this is what my research sent me to and by the time you see this video, it's already going to be installed. So hopefully this works out. If it doesn't, well, then I'll end up doing this again in the next year or two. So, after attaching my exhaust manifold and attaching the exhaust pipe, I realized when I tried to install the intake manifold that it doesn't fit. So the issue is that there's too much meat here and here. Well, that's the immediate problem that I can tell. And when I measure this against the old one, this is definitely about a eighth of an inch too wide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the grinder grind off a little bit here and here. I went to the auto parts store to see if they have another one and measure that one, but they don't. So I don't want to take the risk of ordering something and then finding out that maybe my air intake manifold is off or something and I'm gonna have to cut that one too. So rather than wait around, I'm just gonna cut this off. This is actually wider than the one 
that I took off. So cutting a little bit of that material off here and here shouldn't hurt anything. It's definitely going to avoid the warranty, but it is what it is. I need to get this job done. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so I got it to fit. I really didn't take all that much out. As you can see, I've got a little bit off there and flattened it out a little bit there. I am gonna, on the flat side or the mating side, I am gonna go ahead and make sure there's no burrs and file off anything that might impact the seal. But I even had to shave off a little bit here. The only way I'm gonna know if this works and if I have enough play, there's really no play at all when I have that in there. So. Unless these location points, holes, you can't really see it on the camera, line up exactly, I'm probably gonna be back in here and shaving off even more, but I won't know that till I bolt up the exhaust manifold and then see if I can get the intake to work. So that's just another problem. Luckily, I haven't had too many of them, but uh, what a pain. Okay, so a quick test fit up and it actually works. That was just enough to get that to sit, that sit in there correctly and it's on the locator nubs and I am ready to start putting the rest of this back together. Got to tighten all these up in sequence. First I need to get my uh, downpipe connected and then start bolting this thing up and putting this all back together. There is the new booster, brake booster, sorry. And that I had to do twice because I forgot to put the bracket that goes against the firewall. Forgot to take that off the old one and put it on the new one. So that was a job I got to do twice and that is not fun. So uh, hopefully the rest of this will go off without a hitch. Not likely. Okay, it is all back together and I have my air intake, the new one in there, or new to me. Probably Put a few more things back together than I needed to. I still need to zip tie a few things, but I want to one to make sure that I don't have any fuel leaks. Turn the key a few times and try to get fuel on the lines. I don't see any leaks yet, but it'll probably take a couple cranks to get it over. And then we'll see if this thing revs up to six or seven thousand RPMs because I have a gasket leak. Hopefully not. So let's see what happens. Might have to jump this. I'm only showing about 10.3 on the battery, so we'll see how it goes. Oh wow, sounds better than I thought it would, but I'm gonna let this run and see if I can't get the fuel through the lines and get this to, it's already evened out for me, so this could be okay. So after some troubleshooting, it was giving me a idler sensor code so I checked these two sensors here and this harness wasn't all the way connected. I had only loosely put it together. So for that reason, it was idling off and it threw a code. So I reset my battery, reset the engine light, and now the thing idles like it should. So it sounds exactly like it did before, except I don't have the manifold leak. I don't think the engine code's gonna come back on because it was pretty obvious that that sensor was not connected or that harness. So I think we're all good. So I did have my share of issues. I had to install the power booster twice because I forgot the bracket. I had to reinstall the new manifold twice because the first time it didn't work and I had to grind out part of it and then reinstall it. It took me 45 minutes to thread all the bolts onto the intake and exhaust manifold before I even torqued them down because two of them are just ridiculously hard to get to. And I had my share of other issues, but overall I am very surprised that at this stage I've got this thing running. I've never done anything that intense on my own, but I didn't think it couldn't be done. It's not technically all that hard unless you run into issues after startup and then you have to chase problems. But it's pretty straightforward. It's not that complicated when you watch a step-by-step -step YouTube video like I did and then look at 
troubleshooting after the fact if you have a few codes. So it's all back together and next is going to be the front locker. I might do a how-to on that. I couldn't on this. It's just it's too intense of a job and there were plenty of times where I could have freaked out. I didn't. I kept my cool the whole time which probably made it go a lot easier. But it is a day job. I took two days to do it because I took my time. I didn't want to rush it. I didn't have to. So usually when I'm in a hurry, that's when more problems start to happen. But anyway, I just found out that I might be doing a four-week trip up the Continental Divide here from North Carolina. It's over 6,000 miles. I'm hoping I can do that with my buddy Manny from Super Wheelie Overland. He is talking about trying to get four to five weeks off, and I'm going to do that with him before the sugar beet harvest. So having this done makes me feel a lot better. I can now get the thing inspected and have it pass. So once I get that locker done and just some odds and ends inside the vehicle to get it ready to live in, I should be good to go. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for just seeing what was going on and what I've been up to. Leave your comments, like, dislike, whatever it may be, and I'll talk to you later.